G'day Reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy, welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're going to be looking at the Cade Pro Reef 1200. We're going to set one up from start to finish and we're going to show you why these are such excellent systems. So the Cade Pro Reef 1200 comes on two pallets. We've got the cabinet in this one, it's quite light, and the tank in this one. So we're just gonna use a screwdriver to open up these crates. opened up the tank and the first thing we've noticed is that these systems come with net covers. Such a great idea for a tank to come with its own net cover so you know it fits. And this is something that you get with this new series of okay. cake. So I'm going to take it off, pass it to B, there you go. This is our plumbing. We'll have a closer look at this very soon. Uh, I'm gonna take that inside somewhere. And I'll continue with the cabinet. Just make the comment that this is one of the many uses of the Leatherman. Getting exciting. Such good looking tanks. So we can see our RO reservoir just here. Such a perfectly clear glass. So nice. Work. I had the sump end. Yeah. <laughs> Before we put the tank in place, let's have a look at the cabinet because the cabinet design is one of the best things about these systems. So first of all, the materials used for the cabinet are aluminium and glass. And the reason why that's so good is because it makes it lightweight, but most importantly, it doesn't rust. It doesn't suffer from water damage like other cabinets can and it's a beautiful sleek design and when you look inside we'll look at the sump a bit more closely but we have the sump on the left hand side we've got a space over here with power points we'll have a closer look at the power points in a sec and the frame itself with the cross bridges here now the bottom of the tank is actually white so you don't see the cabinet from from above now that's important because this is going to be a bare bottom tank so the bottom of the tank is going to be white it look really good now there's also side doors we have a side door over here and another one on this side 
and have a look inside there. Each of these switches corresponds with a power point inside. So you're able to actually label and easily turn off things and you've got this cavity in the door in the side of the cabinet to neatly hide your controllers and for really good cable management. This is one of the best things about these systems. Such a good idea. We're going to take advantage of the fact that we've got an open top cabinet so that we can lift the tank on in a position that our hands are in the cabinet so we can easily get them out. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. Okay, just there. And now we can slide the tank into its proper position. Let's just get rid of the trolley. This end needs to go, the back needs to go towards you a little bit. Yep. Yep. A little bit more, but to get this out. So we've pretty much got it in position. We just have some minor adjustments, um, but it's time to put the plumbing in, and then we'll start looking at all the equipment that we've got for this system. That's really exciting. Let's have a look at the plumbing that you get with the Cade Pro Reef 1200. First of all, we have a couple of drainage lines. This will sit behind the tank in that section and this is below the tank, each drainage line and this one has got a gate valve which we're gonna to use to silence our drainage system. We've also got our return line. The water's gonna be coming out of this. This is also in the top section and we've got our manifold and plumbing for the return. Now, interestingly, you get a float valve, and we'll have a look at this when we set it up, but this is gonna be for our auto top-up system. So let's install our plumbing. Okay. So I've got a glued hose towel. Um, I've cut the hosing so that it should be the perfect distance uh, if I push the hose towel, the hose all the way down to the hose towel. But just getting that perfect height so that the uh, return pump sits flat is really important. See if it fits and then I can put hose clamps on it. I think it's gonna be a little bit too long. Oh no. Yep. That is gonna be perfect. And you can see importantly that the hose isn't kinked. If the hose is too long, it'll kink a little bit and reduce the flow. If it's too short, your return pump won't sit on the bottom of the sump. So I'm very happy with that. This is gonna be our return pump. It's an Ecotech Vectra M2. It's a beautiful pump and it needs to attach onto a 2532 tube. So we've actually got, there is an Ecotech version of this but we weren't able to get it in time for the build. And so we've just got a 25 mil hose tail, a bush, and we're gonna glue it into the coupling screw it on place, and that's going to feed water into our manifold. So I better glue that now and get the get it drying ASAP. All right. The chiller we're going to install on this system is the Tico TK1000. And it's going to be very easy to install. It's going to feed off the manifold. We're going to place the chiller outside of the cabinet and that's always my preference is to have the chiller out of the cabinet so that you don't have to worry about uh, being in a confined space and the chiller overheating. 
It's also gonna be very easy because this chiller takes the same size tubing as the manifold runs. So all we have to do is cut some tubing from the manifold and make sure it reaches to the chiller. And then another piece from the out that feeds back into the sump. So let's do that. So, just remembered that these lines off the manifold are not glued. So I didn't really need to get in there to put this hose tail on. Uh, but what I do need to do now is glue that in place. So that's very important because if we hadn't realized that this needed to be glued, we would have had a flood. So just something to keep in mind, make sure you glue that section into the manifold. That was close. So Brandon is uh, out here doing the lighting system for this tank and the, the lights on this tank are gonna be one of the really big um, benefits to the corals and everything. It's gonna be a great system. We've got a Hydra, two Hydra 32s, so they're the new Bluetooth Hydras and they're gonna be mounted on this rail, which is gonna mount on the sides of the tank. So I can't wait to see what this looks like when we fire them up. What a beautiful job Brandon has done with this light rail. Now let's see if it fits. <laughs> All right, it will fit. I think it needs to come in a little bit. Yep. Oh, that's gonna look so good. So of course this is adjustable and we're just going to bring the arms in just the smallest amount, just so that they don't fall off the edge. But that looks really good. I don't think anyone will be surprised at our choice of skimmer for this system. We're using the Octo Regal 150 internal and of course it has the float valve in the cup, uh, which means that if we do have an over skimming event that the power to the pump will stop and it won't flood the house. Um, and it fits absolutely perfectly. I just tested this before. It's gonna go right here. We'll feed our cables through to that section in the, the wall cavity on the right hand side. So we'll have our controller in there for our skimmer. And you'll also notice it's perfectly color coded to the gate valve and the ball valves of the Cade plumbing. That is a very nice skimmer. Looks so good in there. The next most fun part is putting in the rock. And we've got a couple of boxes of the Carob Sea shapes. And in each box, you get four pieces. And it's particularly easy rock to aquascape. So we're just putting them into the tank and then we'll put the scape together. It's 
an arch. And this will be another arch. With this epoxy, you just cut off equal amounts, knead it together. This is what I like about it, it's nice and soft and easy to use. And then you use it strategically in the seams. I find it easier to have wet fingers when you're at the point of kneading it in. And you can use epoxy dry or underwater. So Brandon's installed an Ecotec MP40 quiet drive on this tank and it's going to give a really beautiful comprehensive flow throughout the tank. We'll probably set it to a pulse um, but we can control the intensity of the flow and it's a really programmable wave maker so perfect for this tank. So we're getting close to the completion of the installation of our Pro Reef 1200 and we're just doing a final check to make sure that everything is ready for us to fill the tank with natural seawater. Um, so I've checked all the uh, barrel unions, all the bulkheads, everything is tight and sealed. Uh, I've got all of the uh, manifold uh, ball valves turned off. We'll turn on the ball valve to the chiller after the tank is full. Um, at the moment, Brandon is just sorting out the, the hydras, getting those programmed, so they'll come on in a sec. There's a little bit more work we have to do on the aquascape. The final piece I'm going to put in after the tank is full. The skimmer is in place, the return pump, uh, the wave makers, everything is really ready to go. So, I think it's time to fill this tank. Here we go. We're finally gonna fill the tank. Uh, it's a very nervous sort of time because possibly there could be some leaks with the plumbing. Uh, you never know. So uh, here goes. Hit the go button B. I love that sound. So we have our tank full and you can hear quite a, an offensive gurgling noise coming from the drainage system. Now what we have to do to fix that is to adjust our gate valve on this main drainage line and we're just going to turn it back to the point that that noise stops and then we'll look up the top and ensure that we've got our uh, tuning exactly as we want it for a silent system. Here we go. We've finished our installation of the Cade Pro Reef 1200 and it looks so good. I'm really happy with the rock work. It's been epoxied so it's all secure. Our MP40 wave maker is pulsing, pushing water around our structure. Our lighting looks sensational. It's really aesthetically pleasing, neat with the, the straight lines. It looks so good. Our chiller is hooked up and operational. The water that we've just pumped in was 19 degrees and it's actually raising the temperature with the heater inside. We'll open up the cabinets. So our sump is overfilled. We accidentally put in a little bit extra water. We're gonna drain that back in a minute. We'll drain it down to the point that the auto top up system uh, is just floating on the surface so that our auto top up will keep the level uh, where it needs to be. Our filter stocks have also just pushed up at the moment. We'll push them back down. The skimmer is going great. Um, my favorite skimmer, it's really well, it's working really well. We've got it tuned down at the moment because there's no livestock in the tank. We're going to fill this section with 
uh, top quality biological media. We'll probably go for the max spec nanotech biospheres and fill each of these sections. We haven't done any cable management yet. Uh, we've really just got it to the point that everything is plugged in and operational. So I'll close this up again. So it's as easy as that to install a K Pro Reef uh, 1200. We've, we've been here for about four hours and uh, we've, we've finished the job and we're really, really happy with how it looks. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video of Gallery Aquatica TV and you can see why the K Pro Reef is one of the best tanks on the market. So that's our video for today. I'm Cam the Fish King. Happy reefing. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. Beautiful. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Give me the